Hello, uh, here I'm, I want to give you a, a quick demonstration of using Flowcode 6 to uh, perform PID controls. Now, um, if you go to the DSP components uh, toolbar, you can see here is the control um, component that allows on off control and then P, PI and PID. And if we right click the control and go to help, it should pop up a, a, a web browser uh, and here we can see uh, it details the, the control component and then we've got some examples. So there's an example of on-off, um, an explanation of simulation models, which I'll get into in a minute. Uh, and then we've got P, PI and finally PID control examples uh, work through. We also have uh, the normal sort of component help, which details all the macros and the properties available for that component. So here is the example from the PID control. Um, so if I just uh, get rid of the data scope for a minute, let's let's talk through what's actually in the program. So on the panel, I've got a, a DSP system component, and this provides the setup for the buffers. We have two buffers in the system, which you can see here, the two lines uh, from the input to the PID to the control uh, component and from the control to the output component. Uh, and we've got two buffers and these are named feedback and control signal. There's two ADC components on the panel. Uh, this ADC is controlled to the set point for the PID control. And this ADC is linked to this input, uh, and this ADC monitors the feedback of the system, uh, which is then fed in using this input block um, and passed through uh, into this feedback node of the control. Uh, the output then, <coughs> the output of the control is passed to the output um, DSP components. <coughs> And that is then used to drive uh, PWM output. Uh, so this could be changed to a DAC or another form of uh, digital to analog conversion. So the program itself, uh, we initialize the DSP system. This allows the uh, buffers within this component to be initialized um, <clears throat> and needs to be called before we call any of the other DSP uh, component macros. We also enable the PWM so that it's ready um, for when we want to write values to it. Now, at the moment, the the actual uh, DSP algorithm, so the input, the control, the output, is all done through a, a timer interrupt, which is enabled using this icon here, this enable timer tick. And this calls this uh, timer tick macro whenever the interrupt fires. If instead you wanted to um, have the PID algorithm running as fast as possible, then you could ins uh, instead have a call to the timer tick as part of this while one loop and get rid of the interrupt. The interrupt is good in that it allows um, a fixed sample rate and it allows you to do a few bits and pieces inside the main, um, allowing for uh, sort of concurrent operations, so two or more tasks running at once. So let's have a look at the timer tick macro. And it just uh, basically calls the components in order. So we begin by calling the uh, feedback ADC component and getting a, a byte from this. If you wanted more accuracy, you could use a, an unsigned int. We then um, pass the ADC reading that we, that we took from the ADC and we pass it in to the input component, DSP input, and we use the add as byte tick. The tick macro is, is basically, uh, it will add one value, um, but if we look in the uh, options, uh, you can also see we've got Add as, as, add as U in, so this would be if you'd, if you'd taken a higher bit depth ADC reading. 
But you've also got this add to buffer, which allows you to pass in a, a, an array of readings at once. Um, the most common approach is to use the tick method, but the add to buffer can also be useful sometimes if you want to take a chunk of data and, and throw it in at one, one time. The next um, macro in the the next component macro in this macro, um, we read the set point ADC and we store that into the variable set point. Again, we're reading it as a byte. We then have the component macro to call the uh, control component and we're using the process tick and we're passing the value set point as read by the previous ADC call. And that'll, that'll provide all the control uh, mathematics for us. We then have a, uh, a reader's byte for the output. So we've got the output and, and we're reading the value um, from the uh, DSP chain. And we're storing that into our variable control. Then we uh, call the PWM components and we pass in the value control. So this uh, allows the PWM to uh, have the mark space uh, ratio uh, that the control component is suggesting. Perform DSP tick, this basically takes all of our buffers and moves them to the next location. So we can see that the buffer um, manager has a size of 8. So every 8 uh, tick or buffers, we will wrap around and start from the buffers again. Um, you need several uh, previous samples in, in PID. Uh, I think 3 should do, so you could set the size to 3 if you want, but 8 is, is quite a nice round number. And it doesn't really take a great deal of memory. Finally, we have this uh, if sim model equals one. Now, if I select nothing on the panel, just click in empty space, you can see we have some uh, properties which are assigned to the project. Now, this top property, sim model, you can see that's a variable sim model. Um, so we say if sim model equals one, and then we either call a second order calc macro or a third order calc macro. These calculations, uh, if you're compiling down to an embedded target, you can get rid of them. Um, the, the embedded target will automatically give you the, the feedback which corresponds to the system. Um, I've included the second order calc and third order calc macros in the program to allow the simulation to make sense in the fact that when you change the set point, you want the feedback to uh, move towards the set point reducing the error and therefore showing that the PID control is actually working. Um, so we have a couple of coefficients here and these are basically um, how much of the previous value is taken as well as the new control value. So if you imagine that in say when you're driving a car and you go to brake it's not just the amount of pressure you put on the brake pedal it's also the speed that you're traveling at. So there's a, there's a proportion of each uh, that, that takes part in the actual control. Now if I, if I go to view and scope, then that should bring up all of the various channels uh, that we might be interested in as part of our DSP system. Um, I've scaled it back so it's at the, at, the, at the highest setting showing the most number of samples. If I set that running, I can vary the set points and hopefully the feedback should uh, gradually move to match uh, and the control signal should also uh, react accordingly. So if I move it down slightly, you can see the input's changed, our feedback is slowly dropping um, and the control signal is, is at the right value. If I raise it up, the feedback raises up, the control signal stabilizes and settles down and gradually comes to a complete stop. So if I, if I move it around rapidly, you can see the, the control signal is trying to jump to allow the uh, feedback to reach the set point as quickly as possible. Now, when creating a PID system, if I, if I select the PID, the, the control component, see I have it I have the method set to PID, uh, it's set to process the, the buffer, 
Um, and then I've got the various uh, coefficients for the proportional, integral, and derivative uh, elements of the calculations. So to to put this onto a, a microcontroller platform, all we would have to do is go to Build, Project Options, choose the target that we want to use. Once we've done that, we can then select the analog components and assign uh, the channel on the chip that we want to use. So there's channels for the feedback and there's channels for the set points. And then again in the PWM, we would have to assign the correct channel for our device um, or use uh, a, a way of converting digital to analog uh, signals maybe using an SPI DAC or I2C or something like that. Anyway, I hope this helps. Um, if anyone has any questions, please let me know. Many thanks for watching.